Hello. What up guys, your boy Jayaki Dream Mode, and today I'm gonna to be building a dial. Today's is gonna to be a personal piece for me. Now, a lot of you guys that have been following know that I'm a huge horror fan. Now, as I'm sitting there thinking about my collection, I was like, man, thanks to McFarlane and thanks to NECA, we have all these amazing toys in our collection due to them being so amazing. But I sat there and I thought about it, I was like, there's a lot more titles that have never been made. And I'm talking about Leprechaun, talking about Poltergeist, Carrie, and there's a lot more. But then one genre came to my head. Late 90s, early 2000s, there was a really big genre that just started to come out, and that was the Japanese horror films. And around that time, America was remaking Japanese horror titles into American films. The Grudge, I'm talking about The Ring. I'm talking about Dark Water, Moringu, Junon, Junon 2, The Ring, Dark Water. I, in my head, these movies scare the shit out of me. I'm sorry, but I think that these characters should be part of the horror classics lineup. And I don't know why I haven't seen any of these figures. Besides from The Ring, they made her, SH Figure Arts made her, and it's smaller than 112, and it's going for over $200. No! No! But that's the only contribution that I've seen out there for The Ring. So if I can't have it, I'm gonna make it. Boom. This is the Tooth Fairy. This is a McFarlane toy that I can mod. And there's not much for me to mod. She already has crazy hair. Her skin is all old and wrinkly. She kind of has a dress. So I'm definitely going to be modding this figure. And it's good practice for me because I'm not that good with figurines. I want to talk about a friend of mine in the UK that he goes by Cult Creations. And he is amazing in the horror genre. He's known for his dioramas. And he was able to sh share with me a, I want to call it a series. So what he does is that he buys these old school two TVs and he builds dials inside of them. And I was like, man, this is so creative. So it inspired me to do the same. This is actually a small TV. <laughs> this is like a TV for like security guards. And I was able to find it at a thrift store for $4. Now, back in the days, TVs were tubes pretty big and they're heavy so what I want to do is I want to gut the TV and use the space inside to build my diorama and the diorama that I want to build for today is is I want to build the iconic scene of the ring and what I'm talking about is the forest where she starts coming out of the well and walking towards the TV and then she pops out now I'm not gonna build her popping out but I'm gonna build her the forest and I'm gonna have her in front of the TV. And that's what today's dial is gonna be. And I'm excited. I've been actually waiting to build this dial. So, let's get to it. All right guys, so here's some, here's my sketch. Uh, didn't go too crazy with it because there's not really much to really draw. But here's the TV, here's the girl, here's the well. This represents the forest. And then I'm debating on Trying to figure out how to make water spill out the TV. So here's in perspective. Real simple, straightforward. This no. Am I going to ask for a big crying apology? No. Am I going to ask them to slip their wrist? Alright guys, so here's where I'm at so far. This is me playing around. Uh, was able to gut the TV, understand the space that I have. That's what you see inside. You got the figure, and in the back of it, I'm gonna actually just cut like maybe this much, but this is gonna be the reference of how big the well is gonna be. 
but here's the VHS I'm gonna add it here or maybe on top and then to add to this check this out boom that scene is mainly a black and white clip and from what I'm talking about this part everything is always like a black and white so I think I want to add this to bring this dial to life so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the LEDs and I'm going to add this cable as the actual extension cable to plug this TV now next up is the well this is uh, a lot more anatomically correct now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start cutting uh, foam into bricks and then start kind of gluing it around until I actually form a well so next up I'm going to make the bricks a little bit more realistic so I'm getting a rock that has really sharp edges or just nice textures and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start pressing on each of the, the bricks what I'm doing is I'm stacking them right and then I'm gluing the, the piece that goes on top and that's how you start forming the shape so here is my well now next step is the priming I have enjoyed using Mod Podge and mixing it with black and it's just because the Mod Podge acts like a sealer start off with this guy all right now the pieces are dry and man you can just feel it there's a shine to it but I'm gonna dry brush it so I'm not gonna be worried about that shine I'm gonna start doing some dry brushing now uh, you know, dry brushing you guys could do with any type of brush, but I went ahead and I bought me this brush right here. Um, it's a master touch. It kind of feels like a, like how girls put blush on their faces. It feels really soft. And uh, I was curious about this just because I wanted to see the outcome of it. So I'm going to start dry brushing with this brush. So let me get a little bit. All right, you always get a little bit and then you tap just to make sure you take off all the excess and let's start brushing now uh, you're probably asking yourself like why is he dry brushing the inside right Putting these guys together, I was super gluing, uh, hot gluing the heck out of it inside of it, right? Now, I want to, I want to show you guys how it looks like now that I dry brushed it. It looks so creepy in there, right? Like all the mold that builds inside the well, vines, you know? So I dry brushed it just to expose those details, just to make it look more creepier. Obviously, once there's no light in there, definitely you still get that well look. So, but yeah, this is pretty cool. So I went to Walmart and I bought these dry flower bouquets. So it's kind of like just to decorate your flowers, get into that stuff. But I like just these branches right here. I'm gonna be using these for the trees. Now, from the reference I'm looking at, majority of the trees look like this, but there's gonna be some that's gonna look like this. So I gotta be very selective of these guys, and then try to populate the rest of it with this, with this, with the branches. This part of it right here more, so I'm gonna have to cut right here. Utilize this. Um, insert each twig into the foam around like a perimeter so as you see here this is the the inside of the, of the monitor um, I have all these vents it's pretty cool if like I was gonna do some type of like uh, Star Trek or Star Wars type of look or dial but I'm not gonna be using that so I need to cover these holes but I don't want to really physically cover them so what I'm gonna do is 
Um, in the in this scene, there's a lot of trees in the background. So what I'm hoping is to do a combination of the branches of some of these specific twigs that kind of look like trees. And then in behind it, I'm going to end up using some of the same pillow filling that I used when I did the Ghostbuster. And it's just to kind of add the misty look. it out of the TV set and really what I was trying to do is just kind of get a feel of how tall the branches need to be now that I got a feel of it what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna just start hot gluing the branches right just to give it a little bit more uh, strength the branches have hardened now I want to do is now just cover this with Mod Podge and start dabbing it with moss and just give it a, a nice uh, bank of grass alright so now got a, a fair amount of mosh posh and now I'm gonna start dabbing Pretty good amount of, of grass. Next part I want to do is I have these type of fl floral decoration. They kind of look like trees, and I definitely love the whole pollen area. So I want to utilize these types for adding some just different types of ve vegetation. So this works. I am using cotton from pillows, pillow fillings, and this is great because look, it's adding that misty look, and there's a lot of things that I want to cover, and this 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 foam is doing such an amazing job to cover those imperfections for me, okay, and it really adds again, it really adds to that that look. From the, from the ring, and the, that's that mistiness. How am I gonna make this look gray scale? <laughs> Never done that. Uh, this is probably a first for me. Gonna be using my, my uh, airbrush and gonna be using this method to try to accomplish it. Last part is that I'm gonna install some lights. Man, that looks dope. Now it's time for me to practice on this figure. The thing that I really have to focus on on this build is giving her a dress complete, like nightgown, giving her more hair where she where you're able to just cover the front, and then the she does not curve her arm or she puts them straight. So I'm not gonna have to cut the arm and make them straight. So I ended up cutting, cutting her arm. It was the same as this one, right? I cut it right in the middle. And then I took this metal uh, wire to keep these together. And then I'm gonna use epoxy to 
create what what's not there. So here's my epoxy. It has A and B. You massage them, you mix them, you massage them again, and then you start molding. It's great for figures, and the result is like plastic at the end, and hard plastic, so. And when you massage them together, you're basically activating it. So once it start, you start mixing, you're on the clock. So throughout like every 30 minutes, it starts getting like harder and harder and harder. So on the different stages, there's opportunities. Everybody, everybody that I know, you know, uses epoxy to do the hair, and it, the results come out amazing. The thing I don't like is that it's hard. It becomes hard, right? Now, for something like this, it's perfectly fine, right? But for this hair that I want to replicate, so that I, when I start gluing it down, I can actually start moving the pieces around so that it looks um, the way I want them. So I want to be able to manipulate it, right? I'm going to just... Put some hot glue, uh, hot glue, right? And as it's hot, I have this tool that I usually use it for clay, and I'm just gonna just stroke it down to get those patterns like hair would look like. Light this baby up, because right now it does have some hot glue in there that's settling and I gotta remove that but at the same time I want those I want these uh little hair follicles metal wires to be hot so I could go back into it refine um the glue the strokes that I've added already and you keep on going at it like this until you feel satisfied From the top, start peeling. Check that out. It's clear. It it recorded the strokes that is mimicking hair. It's rubbery, and I can mimic it. Right, I get a uh, uh, manipulated. So I just think this is really a good result. Now, I'm gonna use my airbrush to give it the black that I need. Let's add some dry brushing to get some of those details popping. It's not bad. It's surfacing the mistakes right here. But overall, the results are the same. So then now I could add. Obviously, I gotta maybe cut some things out, but I could add that as the front. Alrighty, so I was successful in removing the hair, and then now I'm gonna prime the whole thing. And now I'm gonna start painting. So I'm gonna start off with the white. I'm going about this like how I would go about the aroma. So, for all you model builders out there, let me know if there's anything I should improve. But uh, right now, I'm gonna do a black wash. And remember, it's gonna dry up differently, so don't worry. Now, the more you put, the darker it's gonna look. So, that's all the thing that you gotta kind of be aware of is the amount. And if you feel like it's a lot, Right, so I could just leave this dry and then see the results. But you could also just with the with the napkin, just kind of pull. Look at those details. Oh, I'm nerding out here. Hell oh, yeah, I'm nerding out. Okay.
crazy, huh? Look at that. This right here, oh, the black gradient going up. Oh, I'm really happy. Uh, next, I'm just gonna do some dry brushing. Let's start gluing the hair back. Okay. Here you go guys, here is my TV diorama and custom figure for the inspired movie, The Ring. Now this project was fun for me because it actually took me back to when you were little and when they introduced you how to build a diorama with the shoebox. It kind of gave me that similar feel because of the TV felt like a box and I had to kind of work with the conditions of the box right so i have to work with the conditions of the tv so that was mainly the only challenge uh, i really do think that this was a simple build you know once you figure out uh, the space inside and then you can start going about what to put inside all right so let, real quick let me just talk about everything here so i was able to get a vhs added some stickers of copy me you have to make a copy of the tape and then the tape said watch me so this is the tape that you would watch so that you could start the curse of the seven days before you die unless you made a copy of the tape <clears throat> second was a tv I was able to find it at the thrift store so definitely was grateful to find an old school tube tv that had a nice space inside for me to populate the dial i ended up keeping the power plug just because in the movie the TV turns on without it being plugged. That was a nice detail. And uh, one detail too that I did not review was, or showcase was the water dripping out of the TV. Now all I really used was Mosh Posh. And then you just put it on there, let it dry, and then it will give you a clear effect. Here I added to the side of the vent. Here you can see some water dripping out of the vent of the TV on either side. And I just thought it was a really cool detail to add to this dial. And then one thing I want to talk about is I ended up using the Tooth Fairy. Now the Tooth Fairy is a lot more mature. And what I mean by that, I mean like it's an adult woman. So when you look at her right now, look at, this is supposed to be Samara. Samara is a young lady. And in, as you can see, this looks more of an adult already. So that's probably the only difference that I could say from, from the original Ring uh, American film. Um, I did not go in the direction of the Japanese one just because I found her to be a lot smaller and she was actually uh, bigger than than a kid size figure so went on this direction but the execution I feel like it came out really great and then one thing I want to talk about was the hair I couldn't believe I figured it out with hot glue from the glue gun I was able to mimic the hair and utilize it to cover her face so it was just a cool method to actually create hair without using epoxy just because I, I and the reason why is because i like the hair being flexible for me to move around if i have to so but yeah 
that's it guys that's everything i want to say about this dial i definitely want to say thank you to my friend co-creations for inspiring me with the direction by using a tv so guys um i hope you guys enjoyed this video hope you guys learned from this video write a comment hit that like button and if you haven't yet hit subscribe guys thank you for watching and i'll see you later peace